G'day everyone, how we going? Welcome back to, a, well, welcome along to another little quick tutorial. Just want to start off with some of the basics of Giants Editor. So the first thing you want to look at is these four controls up the top here. Okay, this first one is for terrain, so that's adjust the height of the terrain. The second one is for painting. Third one is for info, which does your farmlands and stuff like that. And the fourth one is terrain foliage, which paints like the grass, the wheat plants and stuff like that. Okay, so as you can tell by working on the new map that's coming, well, I'm working on at the current moment. The next one you want to work on is Train Editor. This big toolbar here, this one's quite important. If you don't have it, it's Windows Train Editing. It's right there. That What that does is give you, it stops my being silly on me, gives you the radius of your brush. It basically tells you what your buttons are doing, left, middle, and right mouse button, whether you're round, square, replace height. Then obviously, okay, with the texture one, this is where we can pick our textures. Also with the foliage, this is where we can pick our grass and stuff. And then the info, which does tip coal farmland or seasons mask and stuff like that. So if you want to change where the snow mask is. So it's quite simple here. So to go with it, what we're doing, let's go over to a little bit of an area here. I'll just get that one out of the way so I can put this one over the side here for you guys all to see clearly. Okay, so what I want, we'll go over this area here. So token the, the ground one is here. So if I've got it at the radius, I've got everything set to one, so it's gonna be very quickly. So left mouse button is add, middle smooth. So if I go add, that makes it up, that subtract, and that one's smooth. Add it off to make it nice and smooth. Okay, I'll tell you what other con controls are in here. So we've got um, replace, remove. I don't worry about remove, but replace, what that does is you can actually set it to everything above and everything below. So if we go with my add a little bit here, take a little bit there, which is actually a bit much. But if I go to this replace, if I put that, oh, hold on, that's why. Control Z also undoes. So if we go uh, subtract, if I can subtract a little bit, there we go, then replace. If we go Control R, it just sets this height here. You can actually type in a number there if you want, of whatever size you feel comfortable with, if this works. Sometimes it's off here and it probably could be, there you go, look, we're at 200. Okay, so everything, this goes below and above. Well, hold on. It sets it flat, see? Sets that with none. If I set it to just lower, it will leave everything above it and just bring up what's below it. If I set everything higher, it will only bring down what's above, but all the holes will be left alone. So basically, if you set it to done and you hold the replace on it, you can make an exactly perfect flat area. Okay, so now if you were to say, place a building on it, so like, here's one I prepared earlier. Uh, I'll duplicate that. There we go. So there's some keyboard shortcuts you can use in Giant Setter. Control D is duplicating. Control B is basically means like basically bring it to you, and then right mouse click to get it. So if Control B, right mouse click. If you hold down it, you can move it around. But also if you hit Shift, it will duplicate it the exact same angle. If you hit Control, it will place it on a random angle. Okay, and then obviously to delete an item, you right click and delete it. As long as you've got everything. So in your scene graph, see how it's come up the whole group. You don't want to just select, say, you know, one of these little bits in here, because that won't delete it all. You want to select everything on it before you delete it. So you make sure there's no little signs and stuff. Some maps are located everywhere. Okay, so that's just what you've got to make sure you don't, you don't want to like select something else, depending obviously where it is. If I select all that, I can delete absolutely everything and it's not, it's not quite what we want. So now we've got it set perfectly flat with the ground terrain. Well, obviously that replace function, we can, you sh correctly speaking, you shouldn't have anything floating. But if you have something floating, you can just go raise it and lower it, obviously until it's in the right spot by getting a nice close look at it to making sure there's no like little air gap under it because sometimes those things aren't very good. All right, so that's how you set it there. With this terrain painting one, so let's go with painting, we'll, we'll play a little bit more of it. You can set 
what you want. So we can set it as a dirt, so we can do like a dirt texture. And it, this is <laughs> the way FS19 works compared to obviously all the other versions. We actually have four maps, okay? Rough dirt one, two, three, four, same with grass. So if we have rough dirt one, it looks like dirt this way. If we have rough dirt two, it's that way. If you have, oh, two is this way, three and four. Okay, so there's rough dirt one, two, three, and four. They're just, they look a little bit different, but if you just select the larger one, what that actually does is blends it all together and does its own mix. So you don't need to worry about harshest value and all that sort of stuff in 19. It's got its own mix. So this will actually mix it together, those four maps. So it gives you a blend and variable. To adjust that, what you actually have to do is open up the i3D in Notepad. Then you come down and find, I collapse it like so. And you actually find in here, combine layer, rough dirt, it combines the layers. And if you change your frequency or something like that, it will change the amount of um, changing between it all. I don't know anything about it exactly. I just know that's what you got to change. You can have a play and a trial and see what it does. If you want to change what it mixes with, say it mixes with a different mat, you change that in here. Okay, obviously you can put one of these other ones in there or something like that. So that's how you that's how you adjust that um, blend between the four channels. You could obviously add more other channels to it if you wanted to create your own textures and have a lot more channels into it, but that is a bit more advanced. See what I've done here is managed to add in like the ones from SA's to the red and the forest and stuff. So now if I look in my map, I have all the SA ones, so I have quite a few different ones in here. Okay, so that's what I've managed to do for this map. The last one to look at is the, so we've got tip coal. Tip coal's here and farmland. So if you select it on farmland, it's very similar. Bring up your icon, it will, it will show you farmlands, okay? To work out which one you want, you can actually go Control R and it will select that. If you go Control R on this one, it will select it. White is the one you selected, the rest is the map is just colors, okay? It doesn't matter which one it is. You've got to make sure the whole map is covered. Can't have, you can't go here, you can't just click remove uh, or subtract remove and actually take a hole out. Then you'll have an error, okay? That will create an error. Make sure the whole map is filled in. I find it's easy on me um, to just modify what's here to the layout of what I'm doing. So say I want, uh, say I want, say uh, mark out this field here to be purchasable separate to this one. What I do is I just go Control R on that one. I like to s almost set it to square so you get a nice straight edge. You mark it out to where you want it to be, filling it in obviously. And then I'll just control R to the next one and make sure that one's okay as well. So then that's it. Obviously very, very rough at the moment. You can sit down here and when on your final product, you can get it quite nice. So now that is gonna be purchasable separate to the next one. All right, the last bit will be these foliage. Okay, which is basically this one here. Obviously your square, um, you can, your brush type and your buttons are changeable, so you can actually have that add and remove. You can set that around if you want, you know, some smoother, stranger edges and stuff. You also can set um, your radius and everything. Uh, so I'll remove that one. Basically what that one is, is this one here, the foliage layer. We don't need that one on there. What you can do is train detail, which is basically cultivated. Okay, that's cultivated ground right there. You can obviously set it to, I think, click in the different ones, give you crop, you know, planted, ground texture, you can do fertilized, you can do all sorts. Okay, so that will give you all the different ones there. But basically what that works on is that, that is works on your cultivated field. Way that works is, I think, can't be exact source, but the, from my testing and my understanding of it, that actually marks out to where the helper goes. Okay, so you don't want it running right next to a fence because the helper's guaranteed to crash into it. If you have it too far, the help 
you know, you, you don't want it too crooked and stuff because the help of AI helper works off everything like that. And also that's your limitation to it. If you wanted, obviously, to plant other areas in game, you just set it to uh, get a plow and make it larger. But if you wanted a field to join in like that, that's how you do it with this one. Other options you come up here is you can actually do some things like your wheat and add in. Oh, we've got to select it. Select our stage. And then that be able to plant a field of wheat very quickly. Or you can go to, say, this deco foliage and you can put some. Well, actually, that's probably not. Yeah, you can plant some. You can actually do quite a bit, but what best way is actually doing some smaller ones and a bit more stratic. Same with you can do, that will give you different like flowers and stuff like that you can do, you know. Well, that takes it away. We can actually put some bushes in here as well. And so you can create a few areas of different trees and stuff like that using this foliage. So that's where that all that ground cover comes to. Obviously, you know, you can, normally the map has a lot of grass over it something like that, so you can set some gra a grass in it, and that's how you get a, basically different crops to be growing right from the get-go. And that's the foliage layer. Obviously the rest is pretty much there. But they're the main controls um, for everything, so that gives you your texture, your foliage, and obviously your brush controls, and then your info layer. Um, what tip call is, is your tipping, okay? so. Farmland is obviously the land you can purchase. Tip coal is the land um, where you're able to say tip your grain and stuff like that. So if you don't want anyone to tip there, basically do that, okay? And then you won't be able to tip it. But if you, um, so if you, you know, people won't be able to tip. So that's normally marked on rolls, but if it's like this, then you'll be able to get a load of wheat and tip it on the field. So people normally, most maps are marked out the roads and stuff like that, but do not mark out the sell points. So if you had a sell point where you wanted to tip your gr grain at the shop, you got to make. You can obviously go around the shop and go, yep, I don't mind not being able to tip around the shop yard and something like that or around the BGA, but if you wanted to actually have a sell point there, you got to make sure that is not a part of the tip call so then people could actually sell the grain. Otherwise, you'll get this, I'm not allowed to tip there. And that's pretty much it. The only other tricks I can say is with the farm lamb, I'm pretty sure it's field number 63, which is the one around the outside. That If you mark all your shops as that one, that's your non-purchasable land and your boundaries and stuff like that. So layer 63 is the one that can't be purchased, which is that one there, which is marks out your shops. Marks out your sell point, um, buying area, marks out all your sell points, your livestock dealer, and all things like that that basically are there from the game. The, as far as I know, the BGA has to be a buyable product, so I purchased just one land as itself as the BGA, and I modified the price of that. To modify the price of your land is actually in the XML. Uh, it's, it's farmlands one, you edit that with notepad, and then you can adjust your scale down. Okay, and then obviously who you, the owner, that NPC is the person that it is. But there's your IDs, and basically that's it. And then obviously you've got your price per hectare and stuff like that. You can adjust all that into if you wanted cheap land or something. If you want it higher, you could just up the whole scale of it all. If you want it cheaper land, you just lower the scale all. That's how you can do it in the XML. So that's the basics of um, Giant Saturday. Nice, quick tutorial. I hope you guys liked it. Um, please like the video if you did. If you want to see more like this, do subscribe and hang around and comment that you think, yeah, definitely we should get on with some more videos and more tutorials. I'll try and make some more. Hopefully you enjoyed it and catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.